Good morning. Good morning. We just finished the, well, not just a little while ago, we finished the telecom user group call. First one. How was that? Um, what was that? Did you say how was that? Yeah, how how was it? Yeah, um, it was it was all right. Uh, Tom brought forward a, a project that's uh, getting going, and it was the Open Telco API, or it was a very generic name, but now they have a specific name, Kamara. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but okay. Um, it, no code, it's just um, documentation right now, but they do have a GitHub project where they're putting some stuff. Huh, interesting. Who, who was it that you said it started that? Um, well, I, Tom put the note onto the in the meeting nets just to check out. Okay. I'm not Got sure it. who actually uh, created it. I'm gonna make a new entry for today in our notes. Maybe I'll put a link to that Kamara. I'm not going to talk about it, but I just added it <laughs> as more of a notice for everyone in the uh, notes. Welcome, Frederick, Lucina. Does anyone have any agenda items to add? Nothing much other than uh, wanting to say hello to Nikolai. It's been a super long time. Hello. All right. Uh, well, let's take a look at, I mean, I, I can go through the events, but I think, well, maybe, maybe there are a few people that knew things. So, Let's see, KubeCon EU, CFPs are closed. Um, probably the newest thing and make sure everyone knows about is a new co-located event at KubeCon uh, called Cloud Native Telco Day. And CFPs are open, sponsorship spots are open. So trying to get people to submit sessions and sponsor if possible and um, ideally bring in more people from both the KubeCon cloud native side and telecom side to talk and start working together uh, by having that event right there <clears throat> and a dedicated versus the ad hoc that we've done in the past. Um, open source summit, I expect to see um, more telecom growing in that We've seen a little bit in the past. 
at least networking related. So that could be an interesting place to um, for sessions networking related. And yeah. All right. So let's see what practice have, I mean, what pro um, progress have we made? Anything on the air gapped environment? Mm, I don't see anything new. All right. So Jeffrey's just started to participate more. I will try to ping him and see if he's ready to move forward on all the comments that have been made on this. <clears throat> Otherwise, uh, for anyone that's new, go check it out. Um, get some updates. I know, Victor, you've um, commented already, so we'll see. But we want to get user stories through even quicker, ideally, because they'll provide context for other things that we're doing. <clears throat> All right. Um, Ian, I haven't seen, he's, he was supposed to be on the call today <laughs> and um, I'll have to follow up with him, but let's see, seven days ago, looks like Pankai has made a lot of small edits. Um, maybe right now we can merge these. Let's see. This one is more of a, <clears throat> a comment may change. Mm. All right, there's compliance. <clears throat> what? <clears throat> Let me take a look at it. <clears throat> It doesn't look like a typo to me. <clears throat> Anyone else? I guess it's just, you know, so on. You could just put uh, and others if that's what, you know, if that's what the issue is. It's just for illustrative purposes. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a, not a, the grammar looks correct to me. Unless someone wants a comma before the and, which is more of a where did you study sort of thing. But otherwise it looks all right. I think that was the, maybe the question. Pankai or something. Like maybe he thought it was going to be users, auditors, and other users, I don't know, or a specific choice versus saying and so on. And similar um, compliance must use the one users, auditors, and so on can identify. Users, auditors, and interested parties. How's that? Mm 
makes sense to me. So one uh, new trend we're starting to see in compliance is mm -hmm. uh, what's being referred to as uh, continuous compliance. Um, and so one of the one of the frameworks that's coming around to help with that from NIST is called OSCAL, uh, O-S-C-A-L. Mm -hmm. And the basic idea is that you specify a set of, uh, of, you define a set of catalogs using the OSCAL control language, which is basically like, here's how you do it in XML or JSON or, uh, or similar. Uh, and what happens is those uh, those particular things become something that are well-defined with very well-defined variables. And for some of the controls, you can pull information directly out of the infrastructure or directly from the application itself so that the application itself is constantly reporting uh, or the infrastructure is constantly reporting information about its uh, compliance. So that when you generate these reports, it's no longer people taking screenshots of dashboards, it becomes the infrastructure is stating this is the current state of the system, which then can be presented to the auditor and drive down the cost of demonstrating compliance. So the new trend you're gonna start seeing in the near future. So uh, just giving you all a heads up on that. Sounds like we need to get someone in to do a presentation about it. It also makes me think that things are moving back to Puppet and chef and everything else. It is possible <laughs> that uh, Puppet and chef or Terraform or similar could play a part in that. Um, it's uh, also another another spot for some of this could be uh, some of the mutating axe controllers, or you might have a a spire based the tester for determining whether you want to give something a identity or not. So there are. Uh, cloud native ways to integrate with some of these as well that I expect to to eventually show up over time. The OSCAL framework is still very new, so we're not seeing production deployments of it just yet, but there is a lot of uh, interest and energy there. And there will be in the near future, it's pending uh, to be scheduled, but there will be something in the CNCF uh, tag security on, uh, on OSCAL that's going to be presented. So. Uh, when that's presented, that would be something I would recommend uh, joining in and watching on. All right. If you, can you add um, some links to the relevant stuff about that into the notes, please? Sure, I can do that. <clears throat> Does this make it a little bit more clear um, what Pankai was maybe reading, misunderstanding? Sort of, and so on, <clears throat> we say, and other interest parties. It's clear to me. Great. I'll let someone else do the commit. I'm going to let Ian respond to this on what level of compliance, just a comment. Should find out why compliance is not possible to be changed. So why compliance is limited to only a certain level. Okay. 
in their test slug problem, they can see that this is intentional and they can find out why compliance is not possible. Hmm. This is semantics and mainly trying to possibly be nicer with the words. Um, and what Ian was intending was why compliance is not possible on a specific best practice. And you're either compliant or you're not. You may be close or you may be very far away, but you're either compliant or not. And that was the point. So I'm not going to suggest changing it. I so will put a comment. Does anyone else have thoughts? All right. Yeah. Um, it looks correct to me. What Pankai is suggesting is a a good update for grammar wise. This is, hey Ian, you joined. I did, sorry about that. What do you think here about this <laughs> small change? Sometimes I think we're looking at different grammar books. But... Uh, well, yeah, but network function virtualization is not a thing. You can't talk, you can say an A V N F, you can't say A an N F E. Okay, that makes sense to me. Um, what about the comma or or no comma? Uh, I suspect you can go either way and it doesn't matter. I think it depends on what grammar book you're looking at. Uh, it's an Oxford comma, so it's optional. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to leave that one and can you respond? Yeah, OK. Um, <laughs> um, Yeah, NFV is a concept versus VNFs. Does that make sense, Oliver? You didn't respond. Yeah, I, I didn't respond. Um, I, I just didn't really fully understand the, the relevance of NFV in this best practices. Uh, document. I mean, this, I know this is, you know, describing sort of state status of compliance. Um, I just didn't really understand. And I, I still don't, to be honest with you. No, I, I can see where all of us coming from. I don't know how it made it in here. I think it's one of the few places that you know, I don't think what? there is anything else. So it's, it's not a Let me um, back up what Ann's tried to say in the past, but it's difficult. We may need to remove it anyways. Um, there's the concept which Pankai is saying, this idea of virtual environments versus physical machines that are being used. And that's really what this is about. 
a networking platform slash, you know, applications, all the different pieces that come together to build a solution. And it happens to be primarily or entirely in, I hate the word virtual. Do we have any other word? Not virtual, not container, but that concept, not VMs, not OpenStack or VMware or anything else, but just the applications that are running in um, an emulated environment. Um, if we're saying NFE is the right phrase as opposed to VNF here, then fine. But another question is whether or not you need to use the phrase NFE here at all when all it's talking about is compliance recording. Um, a strange point to get hung up on and take five minutes of the meeting over, though. Uh, I will go and have a look at that. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess it's, are we going to stop using the word NFE mainly? Is <clears throat> maybe the bigger thing, unless it's very relevant. So I guess if if we're going to main that uh, generic uh, way I, I, of again, I, I, if, if you're going to have that conversation, then I suggest you and everybody else go and have a look at the definition in the glossary and see if you like it or hate it because that's what determines whether we use it or not. If you can change it, all I was going to say, Ian, if you can change it with what you mean by NFA, then that'll probably make it easier for everyone else. I was fine with it there. But if, if you just... I'll have a look. I'll have a look. But I could probably change it not to mention NFE at all. But yeah, okay. All right. Um, the next one is the same thing, and NFE versus NFE. So I'll skip that, let you get to it. And I'm going to let you get, respond to this about motivation and qualifiers. Mm -hmm. more grammar you can look at it both at the software and process level that also seems fine what he's saying but easy to change can we make this the number one non-goal what the last one i presume which he commented on oh Preventing delivery of components. And yeah, fine, we can. Oh. All right. Let you do that too. More grammar. Well, no, that's a change in wording, a uh, change in meaning, but uh, yeah, fine. Uh, are not perfect. Oh. And if they cannot be perfect, are not. Yeah, I can go either way. Yeah, yeah fine. whatever. I'm not going to fight that one either. Regular review that met this method will depend on the team and their work structure. Uh, no, I like what, how you put it. But whatever, that's also not a big deal. Yeah, that one looks like it's right. Yeah, you want me to just commit it? Yeah, I think so. Similarly, using a standard format, standard encoded format. Um, all right. I don't like either of those, but yeah, fine. And he just removed it. Yeah. Do you want me to commit it? No, I'll, I'll check that. Uh, all I don't right. like the wording, and I suspect there's a better one. Sounds good. So 
Um, that was it for that one. I cannot click on conversations for some reason. But um, you can go through it and then we'll see what's remaining. Hopefully get that one finished out. Oliver, can we get this stateful one through? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see, what do we have here? I haven't seen any other additional comments or anything, but. I did get a message uh, from Tom, so actually. Honkai needs to create all these new ones. They can be a new pull PR or something else. And then otherwise, what? There's nothing else? So yeah, my, my only comment was I've, I've been um, chatting with our CSDB expert internally. So if they've got any additional use cases or tweaks, but I, I think if we want to merge this and then we can do that via another PR, which is fine. I'm struggling a little bit. GitHub's giving me loads of errors this today. Um, I noticed you and another person as well getting some kind of error. Would you, would you said you were getting a, well, actually there was the files tab, I guess is what it is. Okay. Yeah. This says the PR on 208 though. Yeah, I think Pankaj has responded to my my notification just via his email client rather than. Mm. Well, that's like work for me. Yeah. So we don't, Is we'll it get a working for you right now? No, no, no. If I, if I try and do it now while we're on the call, I'll get a, oops, oh, it's a 500 error now. Okay. Let me try to open an incognito window. But either way, um, it worked for me. So I'm guessing that there's some type of um, gateway proxy on your side of the world, Tom. Could be, yeah. But like I say, if, if, if we want to merge this now, because I'm aware it's been open a while, and then if, if I get any feedback from our CSTB expert, we can do that as a separate change. All right. Well, I'm going to give a... Looks good to me. Can everyone on the call please come and do a thumbs up? And Tom, I don't know what you're, can I just scroll down? Are you not listed as a reviewer? Request up to 100 viewers. All right. I need to add you as a collaborator so that you can be a reviewer, Tom. You'll have to accept it before I can make you a reviewer. <clears throat> Tom. Sorry, he was on mute. Uh, yeah, I've just I've just got the email. I'll accept that. Um, OK, yeah, accepted. All right, you're a reviewer. You can add a check mark. Denver, 
Ian. <laughs> Nikolai, Victor, let's get this one approved and merged. I'll have to add mine as a comment in the in the stream there because when I click on approve, it just gives me a 500 error again. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, that's from my child as well. So I'm still getting a 500 error. Just give us a, a, a thumbs up in the as a yeah. comment if you can. Okay. Yeah. Okay, done. All right, so that's with, did I get double thumbs up, Tom and Nikolai? And you all gave it, okay. One, two, three, four. So we have four. Can I get one more? Ian, you gonna add a thumbs up to this? I can't even log into GitHub at the moment. So no, I'm afraid I'm not in a good place for that. That's awesome. Denver, Lucina, save us. If one of you will give a thumbs up, then the call can end. <laughs> We're all stuck here. <laughs> We just need one more, y'all. How about Keyshore? <laughs> we have four other people. Any one of y'all can give this a thumbs up. All right, Taylor, I'll check this part. Yeah. This is Kishore. Kishore, just add a, a thumbs up comment into the ticket. It, unless you haven't looked at this at all. We've been talking about this. Oliver, did you submit this in December? Yes, before the holiday. Okay, it's been here long enough for everyone to have had a chance to read it. These are user stories. We're not saying this is a best practice that everyone must be compliant with. These are user stories and use cases to give us context. Specifically, they're focused around stateful CNFs. 
so that when we're talking about practices that have to do with state, we'll be able to relate them to real world scenarios. Ian, um, I wanna suggest, and to everyone on the call, that we adjust the number of thumbs up for user stories and user use cases to be lower. Three, maybe. That works for me. So I'll put that in as a suggestion and a pull request against our process docs. I guess, can I get a, just a verbal um, or add your notes to the Google doc? If Ian, anyone wants Denver, y'all can just do a thumbs up on. Look, if, 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 if you give me like five minutes, I will do it after the meeting. I'm just not logged in right now. So um, yeah, I, f I figure you may have uh, GitHub issues since. Yeah, but I mean, you don't have to do it right this second. I mean, seriously, if you can wait a whole 10 minutes, I can get it dealt with. All right. All right, well, then I guess we'll end the call and know that this one will get merged um today oliver yep, yep. and then everyone else um including tom if y'all come back and have updates for it then you can do a pull, pull request or open and you know add new user stories and use cases would be great yep. as well thanks Tyler. thanks y'all cheers bye